So hello and welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to quickly learn on how to upgrade from Angular version 14 to 15. My aim is to teach you the fundamentals or discuss the fundamentals with you so that you can upgrade from any Angular version X to any Angular version Y. Because there's a recommended way behind it that even Angular and Google's team recommend for us to follow. But most people, they don't even upgrade their Angular applications. Most people I know, if they had built an Angular application using version 6, they have not upgraded to any other version yet. And others follow very difficult paths. So my goal is to teach you the easiest way, the way that is used in most companies, wherever I have worked, you are going to learn it in the next five minutes. So we are going to make this video very quick, very short. Let me just quickly show you the Angular application we have. So this is the application. We have Angular Material in this. We have Firebase. We have deployed this application. So I would call this a slightly medium to advanced complexity application because it has a lot of moving features. It has API calls, etc. We have a login form, sign up form, homepage that is connected to multiple APIs. And again, Firebase as the backend. So we use the Firebase database. We are using Firebase hosting, Firebase authentication, all of that. All of those services are free under a certain usage. And obviously, if you want to learn any of that, we have videos, tutorials, live streams on our channel. Go ahead and look at that. But now let's quickly learn on how to upgrade your Angular version today. So the newest version is Angular 15. You might already know about this. We are soon going to create a detailed video on what are the new features and what are the breaking features and what basically you need to be concerned about. Because there are a lot of features every time that come with newer Angular or Node.js versions, but most of them don't really change anyone's life in programming. So let's say if there are 15 new features, maybe two or three are the ones that you really need to focus on and, or really need to start using to make your lives easier. Others are just performance improvements, so we'll ignore that when we create those videos. So there's a recommended way that if you just search on Google Angular Update Guide, they will ask you a few questions and then they will tell you a path that you can follow. So right now my application is on version 14. However, if it is on 13 or 12 or any other, you can simply choose that, right? So it will show you the exact steps you need to follow and it will give you a checklist of all those things you need to do. So my application is 14. Yours might be different. Now I'm using Angular Material, so I'm going to check that. I don't have Angular JS and Angular in the same application. So if you don't know, Angular, I think maybe a couple of years ago, started allowing Angular JS and Angular new versions to run at the same time. And uh, there you go. Back over here, if you're using Windows, you can check that. Maybe there will be some different features, a few things you can use there. You can take a, a hit and check that. So now it's going to ask you, make sure you're using a supported version of Node.js, which is 14.20 or 16.13 or 18.10. So let me quickly check what version I have. I'm gonna run node minus V. So I have 18.7. I think that might be a problem for me because it recommends you should have 18.10.x. So there's something in Node.js that I really need to have and it doesn't exist on my version probably, but let's just still see on how to upgrade. What you need to type is, and this is the recommended way for all levels of Angular application you might have. So what I can write is I can write ng update. What ng update does is it will tell you all the Angular related libraries you need to upgrade. And the beautiful part is that if there are some breaking features or some things you need to change, ng update will automatically change those things for you. So let's say after updating to change something in your Angular.json file, in your tsconfig file, all of those will be automatically updated for you. And if not, you can always go back to this checklist and make sure you follow each and every step. But most of the time, we don't even need to look at it. Most of the times, just running ng update will do the trick for you. So what I like to do is I like to do the update. Then whatever they recommend, I copy all of it. Copy and paste, right? And if you're using a Git repository, it's always a good idea to add hyphen C and dash C in the end. So what this will help us do is this will commit changes or the updates as soon as they happen. So there's actually a step, there's actually a way to upgrade your applications. They recommend maybe upgrade the CLI first and then update the core module, then update the CDK for your material and then update material, then update Fire. And we don't need to take care of these different steps, this sequence of steps, we can ignore it. If we just update all of them at the same time and then ask Angular to commit the changes. So if you use a Git repository, you're gonna love this. So I'm just gonna run all of that now, I know we don't have the node version, the proper node version they recommended. So probably it's going to throw me an error. So I'm just showing it to you, knowing that it will give me an error. 
so that you can replicate the same thing on your side if, if you are in the same boat. But if not, you can just skip ahead in the video and go to the part where we add the other. So it says you require a minimum version of this. We already knew that. So let's go to Node.js and update my Node version. Okay, there we go. So let's download 18.12. This is the long-term support version anyways, and I'm going to quickly download it and skip past the steps. Okay, okay. So now that Node.js is finally updated, let's quickly check if that's the case or not. Node hyphen V, that gives us 18.12. We are good to go. Let's quickly update the Angular application. See, the whole update really takes less than two minutes. The rest part of the video was me giving you the background, giving you some important information about updates and what to do, what are the best practices, updating Node.js for folks who had older versions. But a real update just takes a couple of minutes. Let's quickly do that. Um, again, I'm going to copy all of these. You might have all, you might not have material if you're not using material. And in the end, I will put hyphen C. Again, that will create clean commit for me, update everything in order, in sequence, so that we don't have to worry about anything. And once this is done, we will rerun the application. We'll make sure everything is working fine. I'll also show you the commits in case you are using Git repository. They might be helpful for you. And then we can go out and end to this video if everything runs successfully. If there are some issues, some troubles, we will handle that together so that you can also see how to fix something if something breaks on your side. This part, depending on your internet connection and your project complexity, can take two to three minutes sometimes to update everything in your project. And as I said, if any file, any break and change, anything that needs to be updated in the real code, Angular does it automatically for us. So as you can see, it is automatically going through its checklist. So it says package successfully installed, and then it's looking for some migration that might need to be done and removing the configuration from my file automatically. So it even deleted a file that is no longer needed. It is removing export wherever it finds them. So as I said, a lot of things are automatically magically. I know it's not magic, but they're handled in the background for us. And I really love Angular and Angular CLI for that reason. See, for example, if this is no longer needed, it removed or updated source.test files. And same on the other hand, also updating some target for the co new compilation methods and everything that we need is automatically updated. Deprecated things are removed and it's perfect. So all these files were actually updated. As you can see, real code was updated, but I didn't have to lift a finger for that. And if I check the logs, you will see this is updating material. This commit is for doing some migration, updating TypeScript. The next one is for updating CLI. And before that, it's removing browser list config. Before that, it's updating the whole packages. So as you can see, five or six different commits updating everything so smoothly, so easily. Now just quickly run the application, make sure everything is working fine. And obviously once you update, the first run can take a couple more minutes than usual. But if this runs, then that means we have successfully yeah! migrated and upgraded our version from Angular 14 to Angular 15. Okay, so now that we have successfully upgraded our Angular to Angular 15, and we have also run the project, that means everything is working fine. So if you're using Angular Material, you need to stick till the end of this video because you're going to see that Angular Material completely broke after the upgrade. However, if you're not using Angular Material, you can close this video. You are done. You have upgraded. Congratulations. Move ahead with your life. But Material folks, you need to stay back because if you can see, the login screen looks fine, but there's not material, much Angular Material used here. But if I zoom in on this button, it looks kind of messed up. It wasn't like this. You can go to the beginning of the video and check that out. Also, if I go to my join page this form is completely messed up it's so ugly so angular material clearly has some breaking changes and we need to migrate a lot of old things to new ones so luckily there's a command for that as well that's why again i said i love angular cli so we just need to run that command 
It's called ng generate add and then slash material colon MBC migration. So this will automatically migrate everything from Angular material version 14 to 15. So if I just run that, we are done. This will update all our files using old material libraries and it will renew them with the new versions or remove all the breaking changes. And then it will ask us, hey, is there a specific directory you want to run this command in or you want to run for all? I'm going to say I want to run for all. So I'm going to hit enter. Then it's going to say, hey, I found button, card, checkbox. I found some different components you were using. Do you want to, you know, uh, migrate all of them? I will say yes. So I'll press A and hit enter. And there you go. As simple as that. See, it upgraded so many files. And if I show you, for example, in my login component, it added appearance outline. So it added anything that was missing for the newer versions to work properly. So that's the beauty of it, right? We don't have to use our brain. Angular is handling everything for us. And let's now quickly do when we serve and check if our application is running fine. So see, now sign up page, sign up form looks so much better. Even the button over here is fixed. So everything works fine. I'm really happy with this. I hope you are as well. And I hope you learned something new in this video. I hope now you will upgrade your Angular libraries properly in a good manner. I hope you have learned the fundamentals behind how you can easily upgrade your Angular products. And if that's the case, hit the like button and show your love in the comments and see you next time. Happy coding.